everybody. This is Chris Kruman Newman at Midlane Esports in Chicago. I am joined tonight by a very special guest, Whippo from Team Liquid. Whippo, thank you so much for being here uh, and sitting down for this interview with us. I'll start with an easy one. Uh, how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling pretty good. I just flew, I just flew in. I think Chicago is a great, great city. Uh, it reminds me of home more than LA does, so that's ah. really nice. So. Um, a big thing in Europe is walkability in my experience, so even though there's big cities, uh, most of them are walkable, if not all of them. Uh, and Chicago feels much more walkable than L.A. does. Yeah, absolutely. I actually was in L.A. not too long ago, and um, I quite agree. That's glad to hear that you've been enjoying your time here so far. Uh, but my, my first question for you here, Bwipo, is really just uh, what, have you been, what you've been up to recently. You know, I know you've been uh, streaming a little bit, uh, yeah. a lot of gameplay streams, you've been in getting in a good amount of those. I saw a, a coaching stream not too long ago also. But uh, maybe what's something that's not re league related that you've uh, you've been enjoying recently? Honestly, I've just been enjoying life, I guess. Taking it easy, appreciating the small things. Um, when you're in the middle of the season and you're an active pro player, you don't have time for that, right? You, you, you wake up, you go to the office, you grind, you go back to your, you know, you, you finish around. I usually finished you finished scrims, I took a break for about two or three hours, and I played solo queue until I passed out in my bed and slept. So for the most part, I actually get to enjoy, you know, the small things in life. Uh, I don't have to stress out about things. Um, I definitely could do a better job at content creating, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't <laughs> think. Um, but really, I've just been doing a bit of soul searching, I guess. It might be a bit cliche, but um, at the end of the day, I think I've, I've taken the opportunity to really understand what I'm passionate about in life and what I want to do in the future. And the reality is it is, has to do with professional play. That's really something that I, um, mm. I realize that is the number one thing that I personally enjoy in life. That okay. is my aspiration to continue. So the plan is to boot camp in Korea in September all the way to October, right? The world's period is going to be in Korea. Yeah. And get yeah. back in form for the spring split or winter split, depending on whatever I think suits me best. Absolutely. Are, are you kind of uh, considering opportunities from all over for that? You know, your main goal, as you were just saying, is competitive play. You're open to like any kind of opportunity that you're able to find. Or I'm always going to entertain the offer, right? And if I think it's it doesn't suit me or it just doesn't make sense, then I won't do it. Well, how about this then? What uh, if you could choose any team or any player in particular that you would want to play with? If it was up to you, uh, who, what would you? What team would you look at? Or I mean, honestly, I've been with? nothing but happy with TL. So I'd love to play for TL, and I would bring bring over Hillisang. Um, I mean, he's he's a long, he's my best friend. Like he, he's the person I, I definitely trust the most in the esports scene, and honestly, even outside of the esports scene, is the person I trust the most. And for me, I know for a fact that, like. With, with how much I've been thinking and, and, and trying to figure out what made me successful, because obviously my last year, I ended third and fourth. <clears throat> that right. was my year. And I realized is third and fourth, that being labeled as unsuccessful, that made me really appreciate how successful I've been. Absolutely. Because there's not many players that can say a third and fourth in a year is bad. I have the privilege to say that was a bad year for me. So I came to realize I, I can do so much better, I can do so much more, and I thought about what made me successful, and it was really contributing to the team and to the identity we had as a team, which is something I failed to do in Team Liquid when I played, ah. and that's something that I really want to be able to do, um, is really define the identity of our team. Not, an, not by forcing my identity onto the team, but by getting the players to come together and play what makes the most sense for them, because I do think that over the iterations of Fnatic that I played, we played different identities as much as the core was group mid and kill people sure i think that's good league of legends that's not not, not yeah. that's not every good team has that identity is they, they when they group they kill people <laughs> um so i will say i definitely let, like drop the ball there in tl and hmm. uh coming into my next team i definitely want a team where i have players that want to aspire to achieve that same goal absolutely which is, be cohesive, believe and buy into the same goal. I'm fully committed to that. I mean, everybody knows uh, team or uh, League of Legends is a team game, you know. So having those teammates that see the game in the same way is obviously really, really important. And we know what you're capable of as well. So assuming you can find that right environment, I'm sure uh, that you can find yourself back at the top of that competitive scene in no time. So looking forward to seeing what you're able to accomplish there. But speaking at least for right now, 
in the competitive scene, Whippo. Uh, you know, you've, you've talked a little bit now about your own future, what you see for yourself in esports going forward. But there's been a lot of talk around the scene recently about esports in general and how, you know, maybe falling on some hard times recently. The esports bubble, you know, that whole conversation. So what are kind of your thoughts there on where you see the future of esports just as an industry, as a whole? I would say uh, the way esports has evolved is like players play, they don't get paid much, they get good, people start watching, more money flows in, they get paid a lot, and then when they get paid a lot, the people paying the money ask the question of, so why is this guy that's so good at what he does not good at everything? Hmm. And then suddenly players start splitting them, spreading themselves very thinly, in my experience. Ah, uh, okay. It's uh, something that I did as well, right? Like online in 20, like last year, 2022, I believe. Um, I believe so, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I think in league season is not in actual years. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't feel that way. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> um, but I would say that um, players get pressured by the public as well to, uh, you know, they have an idea of how much a player gets paid, right? And it's 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 close to a million. You know, seven figures. It's ridiculous. Some players get Absolutely, paid way yeah. more than that. It's a shitload of money. Don't misunderstand me. It is crazy. <laughs> Then people ask, like, so this guy that made his name doing this and that, like, wow, you know, they're so slow, they farm for late, like, we don't like that. These guys are supposed to be better. They're supposed to be able to win early game. They're supposed to be able to do this and mm. this. And then players spread themselves thin because that public perception gets read by most owners. Owners start getting the idea in their own heads, and they're like, you know what? These guys are right. These guys are getting uh, paid, yeah. paid so much they're supposed to do better. And then that seeps into the, the management of the team, the coaching staff, into the players. And before I continue, I want to ask the question. I didn't watch much, bas much basketball, but I watched The Last Dance, right? I sure. watched the show. Yeah. And Chicago Bulls is the team it was about, right? Absolutely. Dennis Rodman <clears throat> was good at rebounding balls, yes? He sure was. And he probably got paid a shitload of money to do that. He definitely did. Michael Jordan was good at everything in basketball, yes? Also true. Was he as good as Dennis Rodman at rebounding, you think? Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I guess we could say that Dennis Rodman was the specialist on that team for definitely. Right. So what if one of the owners of the basketball team went over to the management, the coaching staff, and they went, well, we're paying them so much money. I want to see Dennis Rodman start throwing some three-pointers and getting some dunks in, and Michael Jordan's going to have to go back to the court and start re rebounding balls. You see how ridiculous that sounds? Your point is, is well taken. Yes, uh, definitely. And I think that is a big issue in esports where I'm not necessarily disagreeing that, um, you know, there's a lot of money in the scene, but there's a reason they get paid that much and they need to be able to continuously be able to focus on what they're good at, their specialty to be able to be justified getting paid that much. Absolutely. So you feel like uh, for the health of the scene, it really does kind of come back to players leaning into what they're good at yeah. and, and just sort of being true to themselves and like well, and their, their own brand, style. Right? Like obviously, you know, like I, I, I'm not in charge of the money, you know, like sure. I get an offer, I get told this money. Maybe I'm you should be. I'm happy with it, I'm going to take it, you know, like I'm, I'm not dumb, but I think it is silly that, um, I think it's silly that players at the bottom of the league get punished for the incompetence mm. of the people paying the money at the end of the day. Um, I think that's a bit silly. Uh, I think that, you know, esports works because people have passion for it, regardless of whether they get, they get paid or not, literally. Like, I, I don't think esports works because of LCS and LEC and all the top leagues and, like, where it's successful and all the money is and LPL and stuff. Like, that I think all it came works later. because it started very small and the foundation is still existing, which is why, in my opinion, uh, I think North America has the... the the biggest struggles when it comes to esports because their foundation is the weakest. Ah. I don't hear problems with e lol esports in China, in Korea, or in Europe. All of the issues that I've heard and complaints about are all in North America. Well, you heard it here, guys. Hopefully, getting a stronger foundation for us here in NA. That's what I we got to work highly on. Necessary. I also think that it is really important that people uh, hire competent coaches and that those coaches are held to a standard of teaching up-and-coming players rather than bringing accomplished players. I think that is a big issue in NA. Um, Definitely. You know, uh, I'm not going to throw around names and stuff. It's none of my business. But at the end of the day, I think this is why it is a really big issue. Is because coaches 
The players play well, coach gets credit. But did the player play well because he knows the coach? Like, did the coach, at the end of the day, is the coach getting credit because he knew the player and hired the player? Or is it because he taught the player how to play? I think for the majority of coaches in esports in Western scenes, it is because they know the player, they hire the player, and therefore they get credit because they're on their team. Not because wow. the coach taught I the player. You. So I think it's really important for you know the NA ecosystem to survive that the people that are teaching the game or are supposed to be teaching the game actually actively do it. I think TL is a really good example of this. Spawn Definitely. is fantastic at his job. I think he has and will continue to make a lot of NAC, uh, like he'll continue to promote players from Academy to an LCS that will be ready to play in LCS. Yeah, I mean, that was you the next thing split, that right? I, yeah. I wanted to ask you about, definitely. Uh, one player in particular, you know, as you were just kind of leading into APA coming in uh, for the for the team, you know, towards the back end of the summer split here. Yeah. Uh, were you able to watch the game earlier? I know it was a travel day for you, so... I only saw the result. You only saw the result, so you do know that they won. Yes. Yes, they uh, managed to take down a fly quest today, 2-1 and one on the weekend. APA had another excellent performance. He was on the Nico uh, tonight. Had a really nice engage right after the team took Baron. But I wanted to ask you in particular, uh, one of the first interviews that APA did on stage after his promotion into the LCS, uh, he actually cited you in particular as somebody who was really helpful for him in making that transition and going up into the pro scene. So I just wanted to hear from you, Whipple, what that process was like of like working with APA sure, yeah. and uh, maybe what your expectations were for what kind of effect he was going to have on the team. It's always really scary for me in terms of expectations. Sure. I don't want to take credit. I think the guy put in a ridiculous amount of hours over the last few years, and he has set the foundation to be a great player through hard work and dedication. And I just want to make sure that people understand that first. However, playing competitive League of Legends and normal League of Legends is a different beast. Why is it a Absolutely. different beast? Yeah. Because you need to be able to communicate what you want to do and what you don't want to do. <laughs> and these two things are two things that you don't need to do when you play solo queue. You just need to play your own game. True. Your team's feet, it's fine. The enemy team will also make a mistake, and you'll be able to capitalize on that mistake. In pro play, you fall behind, you stay behind until you make a be better play. Right. Now I'm going to ask you, how do you make a better play in a team environment? You have to communicate. You have to coordinate it. Yeah. And you coordinate something by communicating. So I think APA's biggest issue was involving himself in the game. And that's something that um, I hammered on with him. I told him, you need to involve yourself, include yourself in the game. When your teammates make a play, even when you're not there, you're a part of that play because you're not there. Uh -huh. Right? Every play a team makes in competitive League of Legends involves you. In any competitive sport, a striker staying on the furthest side of the field in soccer, right? Football for the Europeans out there. Right. They are involved in defense because they are there to capitalize when the defense does a good job. It's important where they are during the play. Yeah, even though they're not involved actually touching the ball, they play a hugely important part in rewarding the defense by threatening a counter goal when the defense plays well. Same with the rebound, right? Yeah. Just in like basketball. In basketball as well, yeah. Any sport. The guy waiting the furthest away from the net to get the ball after a rebound is a part of that play. And it requires the first part of the play to work for the reward to come in. But being able to reward yourself consistently for good play as a team and someone driving it home is huge. And a big issue I had is that he was just, APA would win lane, he would play really well individually, but he wasn't including himself enough because he wasn't, like, he didn't make it clear enough. Like, I'm, pl I'm joining this play or I'm, I'm going to mm. start the next one. Okay. And... Um, I mean, again, like I don't want to take credit because really, all, that's all I did. Uh, that is all I work. Like, that is literally it. Other than like small advice, you know. Um, but it's scary to give people advice. It is scary to tell someone, "I think you're very good at this," because I know my opinion weighs heavier than pretty much all people. Yeah, I mean, I'm a successful pro player, right? Or at least have been for many years. Now I took a break year, but that doesn't change the fact that I had five years of very good start like I was very good in the standings usually um, made it to quarters many times made it into award finals you know I guess maybe Core's opinion weighs heavier than me if I think <laughs> about it but in that office I would say the head coach of the team he's on 
and then it's probably me in core, right? Yeah. So when I give him advice, I know he'll listen. The question is, is was my advice what he needs or is it what I think he needs? Well, it seems to be working out pretty well so far, I got to say. I think, so I the, think, the advice seems to have been helpful, I would have to uh, guess. At the end of the day, I think when it came to APA, I think the advice I gave him was very simple. Include yourself in the game and stick true to yourself. You're good individually, kid. Keep playing well individually first and then include yourself in the game. You follow this pattern, you will be very good. Do you feel like that's a, a more common problem in the amateur scene as well, that sort of uh, difficulty of not recognizing when you need to make your own opinion felt and when you, you're communicating like what you're doing for any given yes. play? That's just like a common problem I think problem that's the biggest issue. The, I think the, the thing is, I told Bradley this as well, right? I was, I was working a bit with the academy that I told Bradley. I said, Bradley, do you think the difference between you and me is how well you press buttons on Renekton? And obviously he didn't really have an answer because the, un the, the, the truth is I probably press buttons better than him on Renekton. That is true. But that's not the real difference. It really isn't. Because there's players that press the buttons better than I do, but play worse than I do. Sure, yeah. And that is because communication, alignment. I have 100% buy-in into the next play I make because I communicate very clearly what it is I want to do, how it is I want to do it, so that when it happens, we're all there. All I of mean, us expect what is going to happen, and we follow up accordingly, like we discussed. Makes sense. I mean, you've been in the pro scene a long time, and I think that's often been recognized as one of your strengths, is being well, able to The thing to is, even like when that. I came in as a rookie, that's what I did, because that's what I believed in, right? So the thing is, uh, Reckless told me this, right? He told me, I, I, you never had the vibe of a rookie. And I appreciated that a lot, actually. He had a very high opinion of me um, very early on in my career, and that gave me a big confidence boost to be the player I needed to be for that team. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I was specialized in specific things that that team needed. And that's why I was so successful in Fnatic, because Fnatic needed a certain, needed the top laner to do certain thing. Every team needs a certain player to do certain things for a team to work. Right? Yeah. At the end of the day, I think what is most important in any competitive sport is that you are consistent with what roles you are given and that you execute upon them. I think the reason why bottom tier teams stay bottom tier is because they change shit up all the time. Week two, you come in on J in January or December, whenever you decide to come in to start practicing for your split. Week two, I can tell you right now, it will be clear who your best players are. Individually, it will be very clear. And I believe that you should commit from that, that point onwards. You should commit to the players that you see are the best. I think it is very hard to be better, like to become not only better at the role you're given in the team, but also individually stronger than the people that are inherently like came in stronger than you. At I least think that is very hard. One split. Absolutely, I think that's right. very hard. Like yeah, for example, yeah. I came into Fnatic, right? Our, our, our lineup was Soaz, Broxa, Caps, Reckless, Hillisang. Star started lineup. But if anyone had to bet money on who was gonna carry games in that team, Reckless, caps. Right. It was clear cut. Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty straightforward there. We committed to that. I committed to that. And that team, that lineup, was the best in Europe. Absolutely. G2. 2019, 2020. Example. Yeah. Wonder, Yankos, Caps, Perks, Mickey. Who's going to carry the games? It's going to be Caps. And then Wonder and Perks will take turns stepping up when necessary. But at the end of the day, that team played through mid. Absolutely. And they won by doing that. And obviously, they played great League of Legends. No doubt about it. But the point is, is the hierarchy of the team was clear. Who is getting the ball is clear. And they perfected that. And sometimes, to get the ball more often, you need to learn how to pass. But at the end of the day, the ball stays with the person that is the most talented in your team. And there is no shame in supporting that person. There is only joy to be had because you're going to kill the enemy nexus, and that feels great. <laughs> and that's what really matters in the end, as we all it's know. Winning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, speaking of winning, you know, uh, Team Liquid in a pretty good spot now. After their win today, they have clinched a playoff spot. So Absolutely. looking towards that postseason now, which, what are kind of your general thoughts on the summer split overall and then looking towards the playoff as well? Any, any kind of expectations that you may have? So the thing is, is... Um, I think it is hard for me to judge LCS. I think TL is in a great spot to be able to be a contender.
best of fives is a different beast, of course. Yeah. I would want to be yeah. fair with that. Um, adaptation is something that's highly important, and I cannot judge TL's team. I'm also on the team, so if, even if I did know, I wouldn't tell you, but actually, I don't know. I don't know how adaptable they are. I hope they are. Uh, but I think that, uh, like for example, C9, a big part of their performance, and they're obviously the biggest contenders, right? Because yeah. they are reigning champions. Yeah. Dropped a couple, a uh, couple of games towards the end here, but still looking yeah. pretty good overall. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, I'd say for the most part, they're they're strong because they're individual play, in my opinion. Absolutely. These guys win games by gaining advantages individually, and then spreading like the, they spread the pressure around, and they pick a fight individually. One guy picks a fight, everyone joins, and they outplay their opponents. That's how it feels like when I watch them. Now I don't watch every single game. I could be wrong. Um, but that is the vibe I get playing against them last year and then obviously watching them this year, the games that I did watch. Because again, I'm not a religious viewer. Uh, also for my own, my own mental health. Uh, because I don't think a lot of the players that are currently in LCS are as good as me. And when I watch them play and I watch intently, I get mad. It upsets me. Because I don't know why I didn't get hired and I don't want to waste my energy asking that question because I've wasted plenty of energy asking that <laughs> question already. <laughs> I don't know the answer. And until I do, it's always going to be burning in the back of my mind, but I prefer to keep it there yeah. instead of at the forefront of my mind. So that's why I don't watch religiously, because I genuinely see. serious, I have a, like, it affects my mental health. I have, a, I have a hard time answering that question, and it makes me upset, disappointed, angry. It is very upsetting for me. That said, when I watch as a spectator, I enjoy it. So I like watching the games. I would just say that, from what I've seen, these are the two teams to watch out for the most. I think uh, Team Liquid and, and, and C9 seem to be the strongest teams. Team, team Liquid has to work on their mid game. And like I said, I think it's a really big, like I really want them to start including themselves in the game uh, individually, because I think that's how you make a good team plan, right? Is when all five players say, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, then you all agree on which is the best play. And that is how our systems worked in Fnatic. That is the, the, for me what worked the best, is people communicate. And eventually, after months of playing together, it becomes crystal clear. This is a big reason why meta is a big thing in League. Why? Because if you played mm. 100 games with Aatrox and your Aatrox player tells you at level 10 with my Gore Drinker, I am very strong, I want to fight, then he doesn't have to say that out loud anymore. He will just go base, buy his Gore Drinker, you will press tab, see that he has Gore Drinker, and then you will make a plan that includes fighting because he will come and kill everyone. Renekton is another great example of this. This is why meta is a thing. Because when pro players practice 100 games with the same champions, they don't have to waste that energy talking about what to do they are spending that energy thinking about how to do it, creativity, etc. Right? Like they think yeah. about how do we find these angles, and then if that's all that you have to worry about, you can also start thinking about how to break the meta. This is why meta is a big thing in pro league, and why a lot of Makes players sense. have a hard time moving away from that, because having to communicate what your champion does and how is a skill that many players do not have. But if you're able to recognize in that game state, you know, even if somebody drops the ball in the moment where they're not able to communicate yeah. what they need at that exact time, if you are familiar with the game state enough and you recognize the champion yeah. and the power spikes, like you it's were just saying. It's easy to know what to do. Absolutely. That makes it's, a lot of sense. It's much harder when someone needs to tell you because you don't know. Like, that's the thing. That's why people, like, when people first time a champion on stage, a lot of people are like, oh, wow, he first time? That's crazy. But it's like, <laughs> if I'm confident in communicating yeah. what my champion needs, when, and how I'm going to execute, there's no difference. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Right. That, there's no difference between playing Aatrox or Volibear, right? If I'm going to play AD Volibear, whatever, right? There's really not that big a difference. Yeah. Well, it makes but sense. I guess that's... Uh, that is the part. That communication that's the tricky part. part. Is, that's yeah. the tricky part. Yeah, yeah. we've talked about that well. a lot already. Uh, definitely. I guess my last question for you, Bwipo, then, uh, would be just about the meta in general. Like, your thoughts on the meta right now, what you've been enjoying playing recently, and maybe uh, a change that you would like to see in the near future. I think top lane meta is in a good spot. Uh, I do think Jax has been a bit too dominant for too long. Uh, I think finally Kasane took a knee. Took him a while, but um, I, d I do think he's still a strong champion. And yeah. uh, I do think one small, like, I think one more second on his E cooldown would be sufficient <laughs> to, to truly yeah. put him in counter pick territory. One more, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, other than that, I think he's in a good spot. And I think I, I like the champion. It's just, again, like if you yeah. see him all the time, it's a bit too, too much. I think. Jax as well. I'm not sure if the current nerfs are enough for him. Hmm. Um, but basically, you know, Renekton came back. I'm happy to see Renekton back because I'm a, I'm a big Renekton player. Sure. Uh, would like to see him get nerfed, though. I think he's a bit too strong. Okay, okay. Uh, but for the most part, I think in terms of flexibility, top lane's been pretty good. Uh, the, like, I think top lane's been pretty good with the potential. You're pretty happy with it right now. Yes, I do think that a lot of pro players just played meta because it suits them. 
Sure. And it's easier, mm -hmm. less stress. Don't have to worry about things, right? Um, you know, if you play an off-meta champion, at the end of the day, you, if you lose, you have to answer as to why you did that. You have a lot and more data you lot can harder. fall back on. Well, the thing is, is if you play meta, yeah, you can just be like, yeah, everyone does this. But if you play, like, let's say I play Cho'Gath and Nikasante and I get, I get owned on stage. I have to answer. Like, I have to answer to people that don't understand the game that well why I did that. Hmm. Well, I don't have to, but my coaches have to. <laughs> right. So you're bringing course, all this stress into the environment, right? That's a lot of stress. Stress on your coaches. Yeah. Stress on the people above there, your coaches. And it comes back down. It always does. So, again, it's easier to play meta. But my point is, I think you had the potential to play a lot of counter picks so far. People just decided not to. Actually, Rumble is broken. He needs a nerf for sure. Yeah, Rumble's I, been pretty popular lately, that's mind. for yeah, sure. Yeah, that champ needs to yeah. get fast. <laughs> um, but like I mentioned, the fact that I can mention four champions in a short amount of time being meta, I think that's okay. Uh, I do think you could play many counter picks into Cassandre, many counter picks into Jax that people just don't explore. Uh, for whatever reason, they just don't. Uh, like I mentioned, maybe it's a stress factor. There's more to it probably, but it's a big part. But I would say I've been pretty happy. I think if I were playing competitively, I would have had ample opportunity to play what I thought was good. But uh, the counter picks weren't so devastating that I couldn't play the meta. Because I think that's when League really feels bad, in my opinion, is when mm. the meta is not pickable. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, you feel enough. like if I blind pick this meta champ, I get counter picked by like 17 different things and it feels hard to play. Uh, on the flip side, there's a balance where it's like, if I blind pick this champion, there's nothing he can pick either. Um, which is... Also bad. Yeah, like Aatrox yeah. comes to mind last year. Jax, yeah. Cassante yeah. have been this way for a while. So um, it's been a bit of both. I do want to say, though, because I, I rarely get the chance to, I think Riot Games' balance team is fantastic, and they, they make a great game. I think anyone that is unhappy with Riot's balance uh, d does not play many video games. Yeah. They do, they, they do not they play do many lot. video games competitively, at least. Yeah. Because, um, again, it's very easy to be competitive in League. If you're up a ranked game, you're playing competitive. Right? You, you are in competition. I think if you look at any other game, they do not have as much... Like, they don't put as much effort nearly into balancing yeah, the games. I mean, bi-weekly patches, and there's so much communication. and It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I think like, the, the balance team is pretty underappreciated. I can name you I'm five games you. off the top of my head that don't give a shit if their player base suffers in competitive PvP environments for months. And I don't mind. That's what gaming is about for me. Right. Right? I love games because they're unbalanced. Literally. I enjoy an imbalance because that means that me, I have a bigger opportunity to make a difference. Look I at mean, chess. That's, that's part of the skill, right? Is being able to identify when Absolutely. things are really Look strong. Look at chess, right? Chess inherently is unbalanced. Yeah. White has the advantage. <laughs> they go first. And that's a game where you have the same board layout and you have the same pieces on the same, like on opposite squares. You know, it doesn't get much more balanced than that. Yeah. And yeah. yet it is unbalanced. I can guarantee you, whoever starts in Pong or like wherever the ball goes first, either one will have an advantage. I don't know, because I don't play Pong competitively, but anyone that plays Pong competitively, let me know. <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah. Waiting for you the in advantage? the comments. The first guy uh, to hit the ball or the second? I don't know, but I'm telling <laughs> you right now, one of those two has an advantage. And that is what makes gaming fun, and I think a lot of people, uh, they get so enamored by the idea of perfect balance, 50-50 chances. They don't exist. That's the whole point of gaming, is that there is no 50-50 chance. It is up in the air. Yes, you can be advantaged. But that doesn't matter. Absolutely. Just just waiting on those rumble nerfs. Then we'll be all good, right? Like that's too much advantage. Like, yeah. It's no longer <laughs> fun. That, that champion is too much advantage, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's an exception needs to, be to the rule. Yeah, there needs to be some sense of I right. can win against right. this, you know? Like, I, it can't just be like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, he needs to fail for me to win. It's more like I can win by playing well. Um, and, and I do think most games maintain that. Um, Especially League. It's very rare that I feel like I can't win a League game. Maybe I feel like I can't win a laning phase, but that doesn't mean I can't win the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, Bippo, I just want to say thank you again for joining us for this interview. I want to give you the chance to uh, any shout-outs you have for, for the fans or anything you want to say. I appreciate my fans. You know, I haven't been playing competitively, and there's still a lot of people that uh, want to watch me. I get a lot of positive messages. Um, you know, I appreciate TL, obviously, for having given me the opportunity. Um, I want to appreciate uh, the TL Academy team and uh, Spawn especially. 
for, for, for allowing me to come in and, and help a bit. I, you know, he's fantastic. He's incredibly patient with me. And, you know, he's nothing but a fantastic person that does a phenom phenomenal job. Phenomenal job, sorry. <laughs> All good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, that academy team has been consistently good over the years as well. So I think that speaks I to... Think Absolutely, and I just think, you know, after having worked with him, I really, you know, I really would like to see him get a crack at LCS because I think he's very, very good. Absolutely. Thank you again, Whippo. Uh, big thanks to Whippo and Team Liquid for this interview. For anybody in the Chicago area, we are Midlane Esports on Milwaukee. Come check it out. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time.